sponsored by the businesses, organizations, and groups featured in this program. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect that of WPDE ABC 15, WWMB CW 21, or its employees. You're watching Carolina and Company Live, your source for fun, entertainment, and events. With your hosts, Cecil Chandler and Amanda Sellers. If it's happening in the area, it's on Carolina and Company Live. It's a Thursday. Welcome to Carolina and Company Live. That means tomorrow's Friday, which means the next day is what? Saturday. Woo! The weekend. The weekend. That's we got right. a great show lined up today. We thank you so much for joining us every day because this is where you learn everything that's going on in the area. That's right. All over the area. Just stay tuned. Grab a sandwich. <laughs> hang out. You know, first, though, let's check out our weather. All right, beautiful conditions out there. We are starting to warm up now as well as the sunny skies continue across our region. We were down into the 20s this morning. No longer the case as we kind of move into the afternoon hours. Take a look at some of our temperatures right now. 54 in North Myrtle, 56 Myrtle Beach, 50 in Marion, 52 Conway, 51 in Lumberton, and 48 there over in Shara and Bennettsville. Now our temperatures are going to continue to rise up as we go through the remainder of the Day, and there's one reason why it's an area of high pressure that is moving closer and closer to the region. Now, as it does, air around a high pressure likes to rotate clockwise. That means on the east side of a high, you deal with the north wind and cooler conditions. On the west side of the high, a south wind, much more milder conditions. So as this high moves over our region, our winds will gradually shift. And after sunset with that high offshore, we'll begin to feel the regime of southerly winds. All right, take a look at our forecast. Yeah, we started out pretty cool this morning. Now our temperatures rising up. We're at 53 around 2 o'clock along the Grand Strand, 54 here by the uh, 4 o'clock hour. And even extending into the 6 p.m. hour, as you can see, See, we're still dealing with temperatures in the 50s. The reason why the sun's staying up now later, keep in mind next week, sunset 717, 718 p.m. and extending beyond that. So our temperatures will gradually continue to stay warm later on in the day. All right, let's restart and show you our inland temperatures. Yeah, we started off pretty cool, but again, we're rising back up into the 50s, 54 here by the 2 to 4 o'clock hour, continuing out to around 6 o'clock with temperatures all also in the 50s. All right, we'll lower the floor and bring back what will be our next major weather maker after tonight. Of course, we are going to be cool tonight down to 38 along the Grand Strand, 37 inland, but much more mild than what we experienced, say, this morning. Our next weather maker, we've got a brief one that will go through Friday night, a few isolated showers, not the big deal. The big story is what comes Saturday across the deep south as moisture pools up and low level winds begin to increase across Dixie Valley portions or Dixie Alley, excuse me, portions of the Mississippi River Delta and the Ozarks of Arkansas. You notice with our weekend storm system, there are a couple of thunderstorms that fire up in that area. The question is, will that severe threat translate to the Carolinas. Day three outlook from the Storm Prediction Center does highlight the risk of severe storms, and it is my opinion that we're going to see an enhanced risk or a increase in the severe weather risk for Little Rock, Arkansas, back out through Tupelo, Mississippi. Why this matters for the Carolinas is what happens on Sunday as that threat shifts farther to the east. Storm Prediction Center also outlying our entire region, as well as much of South Carolina, Central and South Georgia, back out through the panhandle of Florida under the risk for a few scattered severe storms. Models this morning pushed back on the severe risk yesterday and this afternoon's models painting a different picture. So again, Sunday, not a lock for strong to severe storms. So you want to just keep checking back. But again, there is a minor threat there. The good news is beyond that temperatures. Yes, do take a dip next week, but not as cold as what we experienced this week. Your 10 day forecast looking nice beyond Monday. All right, a great show lined up for you for today. Of course, we're going to start out with our Hollywood Minute, followed by our video of the day and today's 
Oh, I'm not so sure about. Of course, then our celebrity birthdays. That's right. That's when we let everybody know where their favorite celebrity is having a birthday. And That's of course, right. we've got app of the day, the app which of the is day. very interesting to us. Absolutely. Today's guests include a princess gala with funds going to Fostering Hope. And Tommy's here from Coastline, going to talk all about your pet needs. And also, we're talking about a bluegrass event that's coming up. You're going to love to hear about it. It's going to be something all else. All kinds of stuff. Tell a friend. Call them right now. Tell them that we are on the air. You've got one minute during our Hollywood <laughs> Minute. Hey, everybody. It's Mark Ruffalo here. In my backpack, I have Chris Hemsworth's Thor hammer that was signed by the entire cast. Another Hulk Thor battle? No, it's the latest celebrity charity contest. Donate $10 or more at omaze.com to benefit the Stella Adler Academy of Acting and Theater, Ruffalo's old school, and you and a friend could accompany him to the Avengers Endgame premiere, attend the private after party, and take home that replica of Thor's hammer signed by the Endgame cast. Been working hard for Jason Aldean has been working hard, and the Academy of Country Music has noticed. The reigning ACM Entertainer of the Year is getting an even bigger prize, the Artist of the Decade Award. Aldean will pick up his prize and perform at the 54th ACM Awards on April 7th. It's Aldean! It's about journeys. The journeys we take to prove ourselves. It's about adventures. We should form a club, a brotherhood change the world. The first full trailer has dropped for Tolkien about the experiences that shape the author of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Nicholas Holt and Lily Collins star in the drama, which reaches theaters May 10th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, so we are talking about Heinz. Everybody knows that as their favorite for what? Ketchup, right? But the company unveiled two new sauces on Twitter yesterday. They are mayo must, which is a, com a combination of mayonnaise and mustard, and also mayo Q, which combines mayonnaise and barbecue sauce. All right, Heinz says the new sauces are because of the popularity of mayo chup, <laughs> a mayonnaise ketchup mix that hit stores last year. Both new products are expected to roll out regionally soon before hitting stores nationwide next month. So you can check all of do you, that. Okay, out. do you ever yeah. do that? Mix stuff I together? I mix it up. I make a salad dressing that way. Ketchup and you know and, and sure. mayonnaise and mustard. You mix it up and put it on your salad. Yeah, I, I yeah, I mix it up, but I think I'm gonna stick to mixing it up myself. Something about that. I... <laughs> all right. No thanks. All right, let's find out a little bit about where I get my clothes from. Outfits like you know what I have on right now. We're talking about uh, the new fashions are still rolling in at Haberdasher Gentleman Clothers in Conway. We're talking about suits and sports coats. There's the full modern and slim cuts. No, I don't wear the slim cut. And how about the two button styles with center or side vent? The suits are and coats are made with year round fabric. Colors include navy, blue, gray, royal, uh, and uh, you know, royal blue tones to choose from. And the sizes run from 36 to 54 so they can fit a big guy. Don't forget the wrinkle free travel suit for the man on the go. The haberdashery has a big supply of suits and sport coats and lots of styles to choose from. Solid stripes and plaids just to make you look good. That's right. Check it out right there in Conway, haberdashery. All right, let's talk a little bit about today. Today is Thursday, March the 7th, and this is National Be Heard Day. What would you say? Right. Okay. And this is also Unique Names Day. Now, you ever oh. thought about if you had a different name, what name would you like to go by? I don't know. No? I'm sure I've thought really? about it. Yeah. I like my brother. My brother's name, John Michael Chandler. John Michael. Yeah, John Michael. It just flows. Good for radio and Cecil. television. Well, so is Ce Cecil. Chandler. I don't know. Cecil just. It's unique. Do it. People remember it. You got that right. And you know it when they call your house and they ask for who. They've asked for Cecil. I know they got the wrong number. <laughs> or they don't know you. That's, <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. Let's find out a little bit about birthdays today. 1964. Wanda Sykes. She's 55 years old. A funny lady. Emmy-winning comedian. Late night talk show. She's also, uh, uh, let's see, she, uh, she, what is no, that? She, voice. So yeah. she voiced uh, Granny, an animated film, Ice Age. All right. 1974. Jenna Fisher, 45 years old. The hit TV show, The Office, movies, Blades of Glory, Walk Hard, The Dewey Cox Story. And first acting um, appearance was for a sexual education video at UCLA. 1984, Brandon T. Jackson, the man's 35 years old. He's a comedian. Films uh, Tropic Thunder. You remember that one? Lottery Ticket, Eight Mile, Tooth Fairy. Also, he's in Big Mama's House. 
All right, go for it. Today in history. All right, 1972, the first time I ever saw your face single, uh, written by uh, Edwin McCall, released by Roberta Flack, of course, and it was Billboard's Song of the Year in 1972. All right, 19, let me say that. Okay. Let's see, yeah, 1987, that's right. Mike Tyson, he beats James Bonecrusher Smith in 12 um, WBA heavyweight boxing title. He was on our yeah, show. Yeah, we've had the bone crusher on our show. He's got a hand. His hand is bigger than my head. Uh, do you remember when he sat on the couch? Yeah, the couch moved. Sat on the couch, moved. the whole couch moved out of the way. Yeah, That's the a, bone that, crusher, he's super, a, super nice guy, super too. Super nice guy. All right, from the know-it-all department, got to ask a question. Anybody knows it, just holler it out, okay? We've got a group of people in here. All right, what do you think is the most popular fruit in the world? Strawberries. Strawberries, no. Apples. Apples, no. Tomatoes. Nope, you're all wrong. The most popular fruit is grapes. Or grapes. Grapes. <laughs> Not so, no, my, I thought bananas. Not my favorite, but what's your favorite fruit? Uh, grapes and bananas, oh, my favorite. Okay. Yeah, but so I thought I bananas, bananas would be the most popular. Yeah. But it's grapes, and I oh, buy them both every week. Okay. That's it from the know-it-all department today. That, that was kind of okay. How's it going? Hey, guess what we what? have coming up? It is tech tip of the day. I like that. Let's see what we can find out. Check out this all-in-one media app after our advertiser. Plex app is the ultimate all-in-one media service that provides a single app for viewing streaming content from multiple sources, as well as access to your personal music, pictures, and movies. In Plex, you'll see top streaming web shows, podcasts, and curated news. Add your personal collection of movies and music to the app through the Plex media server. Paid Plex options include access to titles, 60 million music tracks, and the ability to add your local broadcast news and sports by setting up a home antenna and HD tuner. Plex aggregates and organizes your streaming media, local news, and your personally owned media to a single app. I'm Francie Black. For direct links, visit TechTangoToday.com. The following is paid for by Coastline Pet Supply. That's right, Coastline Pet Supply with us again, Tommy, who I think knows pretty much everything you can know about pets, pet food, taking care of your pets. I mean, I, that's, you know everything. That's I, it. I, that's, I've come to the conclusion. Tommy has brought a lot of neat stuff here with us. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about it. What are we going to talk about first, Tommy? Well, these are our, our most popular dog treats. And these right here in front and all. Uh-huh. This is our number one seller, which is a Bill Jack liver treat. It's a soft treat. Um, there's about 300 in that bag and they run like nine dollars. Oh, that's good. Uh, this is our uh, hard treat. That's our most popular. It's a grain free. Uh, there's about 400 treats in that bag and they're $12. Wow. That's a good deal. This right? is a treat that has MSM and glucosamine and chondroitin for the hip and joints. That good. stuff's kind of bitter so a lot of dogs don't want to take it but they will take it in a treat form. Good for all right, now what are all these one. up here now? Look at these Tommy right here. I'm gonna hold them up where you can see that's, them. You're going, like okay. that's, a, that's a deer or elk antler. Oh, okay. They're really tough. Not right. every dog likes them but the ones who do love them. Here. Now that's a duck head, looks like that's to me. A, that's a dehydrated duck's head. They're imported <laughs> from France. They yeah. run about $3 and the dogs absolutely love them if you can get the customer to actually pick it up. <laughs> I'm going to have to take one of those to my dog. All right, now what is this? Thank you. Now what is this one? That's so rawhide. Um, a lot of people don't like to feed rawhide because, you know, they the vet has told them or they've had problems in the past. Most of the problems with rawhide are the traditional one with the knots on the end and they chew that knot off and swallow it and end up. But stuff like this, my dog probably eats four or five of those a week. Wow. Um, and then your traditional uh, pig ear. Yes. What is that, the yes. pig ear? A That's pig a real ear. pig ear. Put it, put okay. it up, let's see. I'm gonna let you put this on. Uh, pig ear. Cow hoof. And then we have an assortment of biscuits. I got 14 boxes of 25 pound bo boxes of biscuits that are open. They run three ninety nine a pound. You can just take mix and match till you find out what your dog likes. Great. If you were to buy that biscuit in the manufacturer's bag, a pound bag would probably cost you seven, eight bucks. You can get one from us for four. So That's a deal. Fantastic. Any new pets or anything in, Tommy? Um, I got a bunny in yesterday. I got some guinea pigs, a <laughs> ferret and some bunnies coming in today. I was about to say, spring's but coming. they will be gone by Saturday. <laughs> They'd better hurry. 
Oh, and a chinchilla. I normally don't have chinchillas, but I brought one in last let, week. Let me ask, do you normally have repeat customers who come back and they have maybe a bunch of bunnies or a bunch of guinea pigs, or is it new customers all the time? How does that work? Uh, lately, it's been new customers. Great. Um, so, uh, yeah, the chinchilla is the first chinchilla I've had for display. I, I've special ordered them in the past, but we just, oh, we got some cool-looking finches due in today. Oh, some what? Finch. Finches. Finch. Oh, bird. small, yeah. small birds. Right. They should be in probably about two o'clock today. How about right. fish, goldfish, and all that? You fish, got that? We'll get two shipments of fish in today. So you, today's Fall a good day to come by, Thursday or tomorrow. Afternoon is a good time. We got a lot of good get stuff. Past the weekend, we're shot. Right. I was have about you, to have say. Have you ever eaten one of these, Tommy? Um, not this one. Not this one, but yeah. I have. Uh, uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I used to eat those. <laughs> I think a lot of kids a lot used of to kids do that. Did. Yeah. Thanks, Tommy. Thank I appreciate it. Thanks for being it. with us. All right. <laughs> we'll see if you like this, Bailey. We'll be back. All right, the annual Myrtle Beach Princess Gala fundraiser is coming up, and uh, we're going to tell you all about it because this is something you need to know about. Yeah, great event, a lot of fun, Sandra, and also benefiting a really, really great cause, Fostering Hope. First, right. let's talk a little bit about the gala, who can come, when it is, all those details. Okay, great. It's our 10th year, as Cecil said. We've been around doing all kinds of fun stuff, and I think each year it gets a little bit better. And we have just this wonderful morning from 8.30 to 11.30, where we just cram the morning <laughs> full of fun things. All right, what, what can you expect when you get there and do you need to sign your kids up? Yeah, you, you do. In fact, as I was driving in, I just found out that we were sold out for both. So now wow. we're taking overflow. Overflow. And they can call me for overflow. Are you looking at all the, the Prince Charming with the, with the, it's um, a real the unicorn. unicorn. It's a trusty it. steed. Of course. We have all professional entertainers that are in theaters or do this for a living. Three of our girls that are the real princesses used to work or now work at Disney World. Very cool. Um, we've just got wonderful people. Coca Dots has their cupcakes. We have a character company, some of their folks. My phone number, if you don't mind me getting yeah. it for the Go overflow, ahead. is 843 458 1117. And I can find out also on the uh, website.net. That's right. where yeah. you go to just yeah. see everything with the itinerary. We have all the good information. All, all right, right, Nancy, I was, that's why I was going to ask. You know, Fostering Hope, well, first of all, why is Fostering Hope the beneficiary of this event? Real quick. Someone told me all about Fostering Hope, and for the 10th year, we wanted to spread the love and find a new one. We are raising money nine years for the Red Cross. I heard all about Fostering Hope, and Fostering Hope even works with the Red Cross, so it was a perfect time. It's Amazing a great organization. organization. Tell really us a little bit about Fostering yeah. Hope, and you guys have some needs right now as well. Yeah, Fostering Hope, uh, we service foster children in four counties and children in crisis. But at this moment, we need, we are in dire need of teen girls, bikini underwear, uh, sizes four to eight, okay. and also toddler girls, uh, tops three to five. Three to five. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, so they're thank moving you. into a new event. season. There's of course yeah. a big influx of needs you guys have. If people want to find more out, it's their website that they can go to. Yes, we have a Facebook pa page. They can go to Fostering Hope. Okay. Mm -hmm. And fosteringhopeinc.com is there website awesome right. which is an awesome hope you guys have a wonderful thanks turnout. girls you know we appreciate will. it thanks right. thanks for having we us. got more coming up we're talking about a bluegrass event coming up stay with us all right the rivertown bluegrass society they were on our show a little while back they have some monthly concerts one coming up this weekend and then in may a big event coming up as well we're going to find out all the details yeah, that's right we're talking about bluegrass fiddlers convention everything goes together and we got roger and Paige with us now all right now roger you're looking mighty bright now yellow ko <laughs> i kind of think i look like a school bus <laughs> <laughs> all right let's talk first about your your you know monthly meetings okay uh rivertown bluegrass society is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation we put on a bluegrass show the second saturday of every month right across the street over over here at Ori georgetown tex conway campus show starts at five o'clock we've got uh uh, great bands come in and uh, they'll back up. Anybody wants to come and sing for the first hour and a half, then we uh, hire a regional band, come in, put on a great show. But we have a great time. That's a second Saturday of every month. So it's just a lot of fun. It right. is a lot of fun. All right, now you got a big one coming up in May at KOA Campgrounds. We do. We've got a great, uh, the Sea Mountain Fiddlers Convention and Bluegrass Festival is coming up May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. 
at the KOA campground down on Fifth Avenue South in Myrtle Beach. You can see the big wooden roller coaster from the from the <laughs> campground. So it's a great place right in the heart of Myrtle Beach, and we've got some great bands. The KOA folks contacted us, wanted us to help them put on a bluegrass festival. And of course, we were glad to do it. And wow. we, we've got some great bands. We've got uh, Alan Bybee in Grasstown coming in. He's actually got the number one song on the bluegrass charts Whoa, right now. That's good. And oh. uh, and all. And then we've got Carolina Blue that's always got a song on the on the charts. And uh, they just do a really great job. Fantastic. Right. All right, Paige, tell us a little bit. You guys have cabins and stuff that people can stay in. Tell, tell us about yeah, what we have. have. We have over 300 transient sites. Um, we have cabins, we have campsites, we have tent sites. You guys can come and camp for the entire weekend and be a part of our festival. That's what we're looking for. We're also taking locals as well so they can come in for a day pass. But our idea is to have the campground just maxed out with people that weekend. So it'll be great. Good come spend festival. a weekend How or whatever fun. and just listen up and party it's a, a little great. bit. We have plenty of trees, plenty of shade. Just pop up a chair and come see us. Yeah. Right. It is we a beautiful you. campground. We appreciate awesome. you both. Okay. Thank you. Thanks right. for Thank being you, with sir. us. All right. All right. Well, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Where are we going? We'll be right back. <laughs>